Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Teleisa's News, the most important news of the day. According to the latest report from the Ministry of Health, COVID cases are on the rise as well as the occupancy of the intensive care unit. Good evening, Lisa and all the TV viewers. The cases of COVID-19 are still going in our department. According to the Ministry of Health yesterday, our department controlled or got 73 new cases of COVID-19. And also the ICU occupation is growing. 53% of this is occupied. This is all the data from how the COVID is coming up in our island. The Secretariat of Health in its latest report issued yesterday, April 29th, shows that there are 170 active cases identified and 112 active cases in the backlog, which are those that have not been added to the national report. This leave a historical total of 272 active cases. Of these, 139 are in San Andres and 21 in the municipality of Old Providence. The number of deaths currently stands at 51, 48 in San Andres and 3 in Old Providence. The most affected neighborhoods are the following, Naval Bias with 7, Siri Bay with 6, Barak with 5, San Luis with 4, and without information there are 76 people. It is also worth noting that to date 3,388 people have been recovered from COVID-19. The recommendation is to follow up all the biosecurity protocols and have in mind that the pandemic in our island is growing. This is all the information we report from here from the town of the island. Continue Lisa in studio. And according to information from experts for this year during the hurricane season that starts in one month, there could be around 17 storms and eight hurricanes. The hurricane season starts next June 1st. For this reason, the Maritime General Direction show the Departmental Harbor Master Office and knows that it will be more active than previous years, according to predictions delivered to all observations made by the National Marine Meteorological Service. What is forecasted? Well, approximately 15 to 16 storms and 4 to 5 hurricanes of category 4 or 5 are expected, which are like the ones we had last year, a diverse precipitation phenomena on the island. It is valid to note that it's possible that not all of them will affect us directly, but that they may pass above us. The harbor master stated that they are constantly monitoring to determine how this season will be and the impact it will have on the department through numerical models, open access satellite products, and an analysis of weather conditions on the surface and altitude. They also recommend the community to follow the official reports issued by the general maritime director through the poor captaincy of the Department of San Andres Providence and Keklina. And the general manager for the reconstruction of the island said to the local media cameras that she needs more than optimism to expedite the reconstruction of housing in San Andres. In a coordinated work with the National Unit for Recent Disaster Management, the reconstruction of San Andres has been carried out. Susana Correa gave a report of what has been done. Precisamente, uh, uh, as Precisely to evaluate the progress of the reconstruction in San Andres, we cannot forget that here we have more than 2,400 homes, most of them slightly affected, which are around 1,458. There are already 300 that have had their missing roofs replaced. According to Correa, she met with the governor, Everett Hawkins, to find a way to speed up the reconstruction. We have 536 houses with severe affectation and logically the 104 houses that we have to make new, of which there are already 56 made or brought by Postobon, which are the prefabricated houses, and we have to determine how many more we need. The general manager for the reconstruction said that she hopes that very soon all the people will receive their homes. And with the intention of improving the attention to tourists who visit the archipelago, the Secretariat of Tourism began a training cycle. Staff of the Secretariat of Tourism was trained in the use of technological tools to respond to the new trends in the tourism sector, which will provide a better service to the visitors, the head of this office, Sebastián Ospina, said. It was a very interesting training, especially for the management of Excel the management of digital tools, because we are in this stage of modernization of the processes of public entities, and we are not exempt from it. It will give us a great opportunity to streamline the procedures that citizens do with regard to the issue of permits, RNT, and more. 
it has been a very interesting training. We were all very attentive to how these new technologies help streamline our processes and always giving the fastest response to users when requesting information. The Secretariat of Tourism indicated that during the course of the year, other type of training will be provided with the objective that the officials of the office can provide an optimal service. In other news, Hawaii company of workers who have not been paid for several years are receiving a visit from the SAI. We are meeting at this moment with them to try to define their labor situation and the fate of the company. Regarding the case of the non-payment of Hawaii and CIA employees, today meeting is being held behind closed doors with SAI delegates to resolve their labor situation. One of the workers expressed his opinion. We hope that today, with God's favor, our labor situation will be defined since we have been clamoring for so long for the solution to our salary debt. On the other hand, these were the statements of the Vice President of SAE, Samir Angarita. El día de hoy hacemos presencia en la sociedad Howard. Today we are present at the Howard Company in order to review the commitments, to review how we can see financial viability for the company to continue to be productive. In March, profits of the port company were declared. Unfortunately, they were transferred to a seized account of Howard. We are working from the management of active companies through this vice presidency in order to achieve the release of that account and to be able to comply with the commitment to cancel the labor liabilities we have with the Howard workers. Tele Islas News will follow up what happened with employees of Howard and SIA. On Monday, May 3rd, the San Andreas Regional Workshop of the National Human Rights Action Plan will be held, which seeks to cut the consensus of all citizens of the department around putting respect for human rights at the center of the reactivation. This event will be conducted under the leadership of the Presidential Advisor for Human Rights, Nancy Patricia Gutierrez. Among other topics, the economic reactivation agenda with a focus on human rights and the concern of citizens, organizations, and regional entities regarding human rights violation will be discussed. A 42-year-old man who was wanted by authorities was captured for domestic violence and was also charged with other crimes. The 42-year-old man who was arrested in the sector of San Luis is known as Don Alfredo Davis O'Neill. The fast took place during a control and search activity of the National Police. The man who was wanted by court order by Ordinary Municipal Court of Providence for crime of aggravated domestic violence in consistent sequence of serial crime is also related to the crimes of trafficking, manufacture, or carrying of narcotics. She is an aggravated thief and was placed at the disposal of the Attorney General's Office of the Nation. And now let's get to know other facts we're making news in our brief news sections of today. With the aim of protecting children and adolescents from the consumption of intoxicating beverages and psychoactive substances, the Citizen Prevention Group of the National Police conducted activities in sectors and neighborhoods of the island focused on the prevention of no use of these substances. The National Police indicated that it will continue to carry out this type of approach to young people in order to link the entire population with the objective of generating spaces for healthy coexistence and ties with the society. As part of the three-day, the Sea Flower Environmental Education Team of the Corporation for the Sustainable Development of the Archipelago Coralina carried out a painting activity with the children of Santa Catalina, highlighting the care of the mangrove and the importance of mangroves for the ecosystems. At the Okra facilities, the training cycle began with the staff and contractors of the population control entity in order to enhance the skills and knowledge of them and improve the efficiency of each of them. Within the training topics were highlighted technological security and optimization of digital resources. At this time, we continue with the weather forecast. Weather forecast for today, April 30th in the coastal area of Archipelago, the sky is partly cloudy. Temperature is 30 degrees Celsius with winds from the northeast direction with intensities at 14 km per hour. Humidity forecast is 66% and probability of precipitations is up 2%.